Yeah, just when you thought I couldn't get enough One Piece shit in my reviews, now I have the hat. Um, actually, side note, this isn't One Piece related, but a fan of mine sent me a Kurama Funko Pop, like, giant figurine. So, I was thinking if I could get some One Piece Pop figurines, that'd be cool in the background, uh, there. Anyway, uh, this is One Piece, chapter 826, titled Zero and Four Review. And the point of this chapter, the overarching thing that you should really take away from it, is we are introduced to two members of Sanji's family, the Vine Smoke family, as seen over here to the left of me. We have his little brother and his older sister. Uh, of course, the main threat of this arc, uh, aside from Big Mom, which we don't really know how, you know, the Vine Smoke family is going to mix with the Big Mom pirates. We don't know if they're, like, going to ally together to take on all the straw hats or if there's going to be some dissension between them at some point because their re their union is not complete yet. That's the whole point of Sanji's wedding, which if that doesn't go off without a hitch, it's possible that Big Mom or the Vine, uh, the uh, Gurma Double Six could just to say, you know, we don't want this and anything could happen here. This is still the beginning of this arc. But uh, these are the, the main threat's going to be Sanji's like dad. I would assume that's going to be the guy you got to watch out for. Uh, but we're introduced to the family and some potential of what they're capable of. And the capability of them is seen really early on just in the way that they're dressed and what their ship looks like. Just one of the Gurma Double Six's ships um, is unlike any other ship we've seen in the series. First off, it's massive. It literally dwarfs the Thousand Sunny. It's essentially, like, it's obviously not as big as, like, Zoe or something, because Zoe was, like, this giant thing. But this, the Sunny is just this tiny little speck compared to this thing. It's a giant... Um, slug, I would assume, like, some sort of sea slug that resembles the Den Den Mushi is basically piloting it and is, like, being able to move it. It's it's a living thing because its eyes are moving, uh, but it's probably not related to the Den Den Mushi. If so, it's, like, a distant relative because uh, the Den Den Mushi are snails, which snails and salt water, don't know if you knew that, don't really mix too well, so it's probably some other variation of that. And then on top of this sea slug or whatever, you have, like, a giant castle that is essentially the ship. Like, this thing is huge. And the one that we saw last chapter, the one with the hood, and it was, like, obscuring, we saw the eyelash underneath it. That is Sanji's uh, little brother, Yonji. Can't make this shit up. Yonji Vine Smoke, and he appears, and he's basically a massive dick to the Straw Hats. He asks, you know, what they're doing there, and they start freaking out because they don't know what's going to happen now because they're the Gurma Double Six ship, and even PCOMs doesn't really know what's up. Um, but the first thing they do is they plead to them to try to uh, help Luffy because Luffy, he... You never know what's going to be a throwaway joke, joke with Oda or what's going to be, like, serious, you know? You, you never know. It's like the thing with Sanji and his nose bleeding back in the Fishman Island arc. At first, when that happened, it's like, oh, that's just a joke. It's just a throwaway. And then that ended up being, like, an important crux of that arc. And now here we have Luffy who ate, like, this fish. And at first it was kind of funny, like, oh, ha, 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 Sanji's not the cook. So, I mean, he's not around, so they have to eat their own food. And they ended up being poisoned by Luffy's horrible cooking. Isn't that just so hilarious? But, um, no, he's he's critically poisoned. Like, he has a rash developing all over his body, and Chopper doesn't know what the fuck to make of it, and he's freaking out because he's like, wait a second, Luffy should have these godlike immunities because of his ordeal and impel down from Magellan's poison and from Ivanka's healing hormones. How the hell is he still, like, this poison's, like, killing him, basically. And they ran out, they, they basically tried all the antidotes they had, and nothing would work. So, um, they're pleading to basically the Gurma Double Six ship to help them out here, and Yonji's basically like, fuck it, I'm not gonna help you, you guys are pirates, how about you try raiding our ship, and then take the antidote? Well, um, he is stopped by, uh, Sanji's older sister, Reije, uh, Veensmoke, or Reije, Reijai, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but she shows up, and she is fucking smoking hot, alright, so, yeah, I, I mean... I don't know what Sanji would say to her, because this is totally Sanji's type of girl, but it's also his sister, and uh, she brings up the last time that she saw Sanji was, like, when he was a little kid, so obviously they've all grown up. I don't know if Sanji would be aware of Yonji, depending on how old he is, because the first time we saw Sanji, he was, like, 
like six, seven, eight years old working on that cruise ship, the Orbit. So it's very possible that Yonji might have been an infant or not even born when the time that, uh, you know, Sanji left the Vine Smoke family, however that happened. But he would most certainly remember his older sister, Ray J. Um, she's a little bit more kind hearted to the Straw Hats, and she decides to help them out here because uh, they, they do want to see uh, their younger brother again, you know, because they haven't been, they haven't seen him for so long. And she also brings up, interesting enough, the, uh, the Duval incident. Um, she brings up how two years ago the first wanted poster that was for Sanji resembled Duval, and uh, remember back when Duval was introduced, he basically was pissed at the Straw Hats, Sanji in particular, because yo damn Straw Hats, you know, ever since your wanted poster was released, Sanji, the Navy would chase me to no end around the Earth, and the reason that the Navy was chasing him so vehemently, you know was because that, I guess, Sanji's father got wind of the wanted poster and they're like, find him and then the Marines went, you know, ape shit over that one particular poster, and it was ended up being Duvall, and that was the kind of thing that messed everybody up there. Um, you know, so that, that's what happened with that. But Ray J herself has a very unique ability, and that ability is to absorb or suck out poisons. Or she can eat poisons would be a better way of describing it. So she jumps down on the Sunny, and she approaches Luffy, and she like examines him. And it's like, oh, this is the poison from the rock stonefish or whatever, the, the from the hot, hot sea that you went to or whatever, the, the type of fish. And she mentions that the reason that it was affecting Luffy so much is probably like a little bit wouldn't hurt him too much, but this thing was huge, and Luffy ate pretty much all of it, and the amount of poison he ingested has been, it was absurd. It was, like, enough to kill a fucking giant. So that's the reason why his immunity ain't doing anything. Like, he had, like, beyond, like, just a... It, it's just incredible. So he, she notices he's kind of like a glutton, so I can understand how he ate so much. So she basically kneels down and, I guess, kisses him or just, like, touches him in, on, the, on the cheek or the face or whatever and sucks out the poison, and the poison goes into her for a little bit and she develops, like, the same rash Luffy did, but that just disappears after a while and she just, like... <sighs> yummy and then it's very kind of sexual at the moment like brooke is freaking out he's like oh my god i wish i could kiss her and but i don't have lips Yo -ho -ho -ho, you know whatever um so yeah her power i have no idea because it, it can't be the poison poison fruit for like oh i can absorb poisons no problem because that was magellan and magellan is still alive um it's not anything related to healing because that was uh, man sherry's thing so if i had to go off a cuff i would say her fruit ability and this is going to sound similar to wapples fruit in a second, the munch munch fruit or whatever, but I'm going to say it's an ability where she can eat anything. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's very similar to Waffle's ability, but I think it might be something like on the next level. Like we notice how Odo has been doing that thing as of late where he's introducing like another level to a devil fruit. Like for example, um, you had Mr. One's fruit, the Sube Subi no Mi, which made like iron blades extend from his body. And then you had kind of like an upgraded version of that with uh, Baby Five with the Buki Buki no Mi, which the weapon fruit. And he mentioned like, okay, there's like different like levels to these devil fruit abilities. So maybe you have like Waffle fruit, which was allowing him to eat any physical thing, like, it doesn't matter if it was, like, you know, um, you know, a ship, metal, iron, uh, fucking wood, you know, whatever, he can eat it, and he can incorporate it into his own body, but maybe with this fruit, it's, like, you can eat stuff that's not even, like, physical, like, with poisons, like, you can devour anything, or something like that, like, that's the best idea I got, um, just because the other fruits, like, that's something that could, it's not any kind of healing ability, because that was, you know, obviously, like I said, Mancherry's thing. Well, anyway, something else about the Gurma Double Six that is shown, and that, uh, PCOMS brings up, is that they're, like, a technologically advanced, um, they're basically, like, superheroes, sort of, like, they, that's the reason they were in the, 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 uh, comic strip, you know, they're, like, these technologically advanced supervillains that are being attacked by the Navy, you know, and they, they, they resemble a lot of stuff from, like, um, Super Sentai or Kamen Rider, uh, which is not a big deal because I know that Oda is a fan of that sort of stuff, so uh, it's no surprise, but it, most notably, they have, like, these jet boots things that they use. Uh, Yonji used it to jump in the air, and then um, Reje used it to, like, land on the Straw Hat ship, so they're very similar to the uh, kind of, like, ice skate sort of things that the Skypeans wore, that the Enchandorians wore, like Wiper and them, the guys that could uh, use them to ski on the clouds, you know, they're kind of like that, but these ones can be used not just on the ocean, I would imagine, but also they can basically use them to fly. They're like jet boots. 
Anyone watch uh, Shaolin Showdown, Jet Butsu? No, anybody? Okay, whatever. Um, but along with that, they also have, like, these really cool gauntlets on their hands. Like, you can see them decked out, basically, like, super vi uh, superheroes, supervillains, whichever. So they probably have a lot more unique abilities to that. But Ray J's ability to absorb poison, I'm sure, I'm almost certain that's a devil fruit. That has to be a devil fruit. But it's it's cool, though, because I'm sure we're going to see a lot of other neat techniques that even the members of the Gurma Double Six that don't have devil fruit powers uh will probably be able to contend with the straw hats with these really advanced pieces of technology something else i should bring up is the title of the chapter itself the zero and four uh you can see on uh yonji's cloak over here that he has like the big number four tattooed on the side well not tattooed but written on the side of the cape and then with ray J, we don't really know i mean I i'm trying to look for the zeros i mean you can just take them to be the zeros that take the appearance of her of her very large bread. Okay, anyway, um, I don't. I don't know if that means like their code numbers for each member. And considering, um, I'm assuming the Sanji's dad would be the head of the family, and then of course his children would be highly ranked. So the fact that you know zero and four are introduced this early, that doesn't make that that, that makes a lot of sense. And maybe like the other high-ranking members of the family are given a number. Maybe that's what it had to deal with. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that that's that. And so. Basically, the chapter ends with Ray J saying that, okay, we're going to kind of overlook, we saw you here, like, we, we just didn't see you, you know, that kind of thing, because they don't want to fuck up this wedding any more than, um, you know, Yonji does, or the Big Mom Pirates don't, because they want that to happen, they want to be able to see Sanji again, they want the union to happen, so they're like, basically, okay, we didn't see you, you didn't see us, and they just leave, and Luffy is cured now, so everything's cool, right? Um... But uh, I'm sh most certainly, of course, the next time they meet, they're going to be enemies. And this was just an introductory chapter just to see what they're capable of and just the basic idea of the Vine Smoke family. Brooke mentions one more thing, and that is uh, going by his knowledge of them from so long ago. He brings up that they were basically like cast out a long time ago of their kingdom or whatever, and they, they used to be nobility, but they're not anymore. And Ray J corrects that. He she says that well, we're not we don't have a country anymore, but we do have noble status, and we are still allowed to attend a reverie. So it's like this weird exception to the rule where even though you don't have a home country and you're just kind of wandering the seas on your giant snail ships, you're still considered nobles, and you're being you can still attend the world summit. So that's a pretty interesting thing to bring up there. But uh, the chapter ends kind of just out of nowhere, really, with this, you know. It's like the chapter was pretty going along at a steady pace. We're finding out a decent amount about Sanji's family and the Vine Smoke family and Garma Double Six, and then they depart. And then you have the Thousand Sunny just by itself out there in the in the ocean. And then underneath the ocean, you see a fishman. And this fishman is somebody we've seen before. He's uh, Aladdin from the uh, Sun Pirates that we saw back in. I don't think we saw him in Aladdin himself back during the Fishman Island arc, but we did see him in the flashback uh, during that arc with uh, Jim Bay and everybody else during you know, the, the backstory with Fisher Tiger. Aladdin was the doctor on the ship, and we saw him down there, and he has his, his ponytail. And we don't see his face, but we know it's him. And he has, like, his... his um uh, trident with him, and he's looking up at the Straw Hat's ship, he's underneath the Thousand Sunny, and he, he notices that Luffy's on board, and he's talking to somebody, and the person he's talking to is, uh, Jimbe. So he's like, hey, we've, uh, we've identified Straw Hat Luffy is on the ship, what do you want us to do, Jimbe? And that's the end of the chapter. So, Jimbe is gonna be showing up in this arc to help out, uh, Luffy and them, uh, you know, take on the Big Mom Pirates, which makes perfect sense, because it's like, Okay, you have Luffy, pretty strong dude, not gonna lie. Then you have Brooke, pretty solid. I, I think I could see Brooke taking on one of the members of the Vine Smoke family. Maybe one of the lower ranking members of the um, Big Mom Pirates. Okay, sure. Nami, not so much. Uh, you know, Chopper... Okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I could see Chopper taking on a Big Mom Pirate or a member of the Vine Smoke family, but... That's like, and, and then you have Carrots, which, you know, Oda, because this is like Carrots' first outing with the Straw Hats, we're probably going to get to see some really badass shit with Carrots. We really don't know anything about the Electro shit that was introduced yet, so um, I could see Carrot being in a fight, and then 
being like really scared at first, but then managing to take you know one of her enemy, one of the enemies out, um, and then Oda showing how awesome the Minks are. So I think any fight that she's going to be in is going to be a win, at least the first fight. Uh, but after that, you're you're done. You got nothing. So um, entire freaking underworld crime family, the Zoldix, basically here, and then you have a Yonku's crew. <laughs> it's like. Um, <laughs> you're kind of outclassed here a little bit. So Jinbei showing up, um, that, that is, makes a lot of sense now, but it's interesting that Oda decided to incorporate him now because we didn't really have any updates on him for a while. We had the cover story with him, but that was pretty much it. Um, oh, speaking of the cover, last thing before I go, very hilarious. It is Mihawk and Perona. Perona apparently after she went to Shibondi with, uh, uh, Saba Oni with uh, Zoro, and after she left, she went to Thriller Bark, picked up Kumasi really quick, and then I guess immediately went back to, uh, Kuregia Island with, uh, Mihawk. And now they're on the island and they're using the human drills you know, the, the monkeys that fought against Zoro, they're all wearing, like, farming outfits, and they're using, like, farming equipment to, like, retill the land, because, like, the whole point of Kirigari Island was it was, like, this big, huge battlefield between these humans that basically massacred each other, and the whole place was, like, dead, and blood ran everywhere, and now they're tilling the land to make it, like, suitable, and they're growing vegetables, and you see Mihawk just sitting there in farming outfit and a straw hat, like, munching on rice balls, and <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's funny, because when we first introduced the Mihawk, it's like, holy shit, this guy's badass. And then there's a little bit more of, like, a comedic element, you know, ever since, you know, Zoro met him, you know, and started training with him a little bit. There's, he's starting to warm up to, you know, his more human side a little bit more. You know, he's not, like, this cold-hearted badass that's like, I'm evil and I'm gonna kill you. He's more just, like, chaotic neutral. He's just like, yeah, sure, uh, get in my way and I'll kill you, but, you know, as long as you don't, I'm pretty chill, you know? just kind of want to, I just kind of want, he seemed, Mihawk's the kind of guy that just wants to do his own thing, you know, he's just like, whatever route allows me to do my own thing without really being encumbered by laws and shit, like, is, is, I, I could see him, that's like the reason he joined the Shibukai, just like, you know, okay, um, I can join up with you, and I don't have the Marines chasing after me, and I can kind of go around and kill whoever I want, as long as it's not, um, you know, a Marine or somebody, okay, cool, I'll do that, you know, he, he's, he's that kind of guy. Anyway, uh, what'd you guys think of the chapter, let it in comment below, this is kind of a long review, but, you know, and I'm me. So thanks for watching. Uh, signing out.